Hello again everybody, this is Marcus Mackey, also known as SpongeZilla from SlingingDirt.com. Um, we're going to do another in our series of tutorials on vector work um, within Adobe Illustrator today. Um, as you know, in the last tutorial I did, we converted a set of numbers from Photoshop, uh, Adobe Photoshop I should say, into Adobe Illustrator for doing vector editing. And today we're going to show you some of the benefits of doing that. Um, I'm going to take a set of numbers that, or the set of numbers that we worked on in the last tutorial, and I'm going to give them not only vector strokes using the offset path command, but I'm also going to show you how to do a set of drop shadows, how to use the pathfinder to unite two different vector objects into one, and uh, well, let's just get started. So I'm going to go into Adobe Illustrator, which I've already got open, and as you can see, we've got the shapes. Um, the last tutorial, I only had one set of numbers. This one, we've got two. Um, I've also gone in and cleaned them up a little bit. By uh, You can go in and grab the points just like you would in Photoshop, and you can move things around. Um, one of the benefits I showed you in the last tutorial was these buttons up here that allow you to align objects, top and bottom. You can actually select your multiple points, and if you want all of them on a flat plane, you would choose one of these options like uh, either vertical line center or in our case probably vertical line bottom would work. Um, you can also use vertical align top to align the ones that are on the top edge of the number. Um, those are nice little tools that will help you get a nice clean edge on all of your shapes. As you can see everything is pretty well straight on our shapes. They're both compound paths as I showed you in the last tutorial meaning that this number and this number are both combined together into one vector object. Um, and uh, since we've got that started, let's just go right ahead into doing ourselves a set of uh, offset paths. So an offset path basically is taking this original object and it's going to expand it or contract it. And to show you exactly what I mean, I'm going to select offset path and we've got this little dialog that pops up. Now we're gonna make an offset path and I'm, I'm gonna click preview here in a second but I'm gonna show you what these things do. This is gonna control how much it's offset. It's either gonna get bigger or smaller than the original object or if I were to set it at zero it would be exactly the same. So in this case um, a positive integer which is a positive number which is four points in this case will give you an outer shape that's four points larger than the original shape. This option where it says joins it refers to miter, round, or bevel. Now if you're used to using Adobe uh, Photoshop for doing your, your strokes in the past, um, what that generates is basically it's kind of like a round join. And that round join basically kind of makes it have a rounded edge around everything that you do. And it kind of, as you get larger and larger with things, it balloons out. The other option in this is bevel and miter. And miter is the one that we're going to use today. Um, there's not very much usage, I don't believe, for bevel in the sim racing work that we do. A bevel is going to generate almost like a 45 degree angle around each one of the points. Um, I'll show you an example of that in a second. <clears throat> so our first thing we're going to do is I'm going to choose to make an eight point offset for our first outline. And I'm going to click preview and it's going to give you an example of what it's going to look like. And this is ex essentially eight points larger than our original shape. As you can tell it's all black. And that's because the current color over here, our foreground color is set to black. And you kind of want to keep it that way. I mean once we get it done I'll show you a quick and easy way to change it so that you can actually see everything. Um, but just to give you an example, what I meant about miter, round, notice the edges are all rounded now, and bevel, which generates these like 45 or 30 degree angle uh, edges around the points, or the outer uh, control points of our shape. We're going to go back to miter, and I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, it created an extra shape, which is in proximity to these. What I'm going to do to make things a little easier on myself here is I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to 
go up to object here and I'm going to make a group. And a group basically creates a folder almost. It doesn't have the folder icon, but it creates kind of like a containing cell for everything that we do. Um, when we created that new shape, it put it around the outside. So it actually puts it in behind digital object. And as you know with Photoshop, anything that's in front becomes visible in the foreground. Anything in the back in terms of layers becomes visible in the background. I'm going to change the color to bright red. And there we go. There's our start. As you can see, it's pretty cool looking. Um, the numbers actually look pretty clean. Um, sometimes when you do a shape, the uh, stroke as you do it may end up getting spiky or look off, you know, just a little off. Um, what you would do then is just delete what you just did in terms of your offset path. Go in and manipulate your original shape and then <clears throat> go in and create another one. In the case of like right here where it's rounded instead of spiky, as you might very well expected it to be, um, what I did was is since I didn't want it to have that spiky edge, I created a shape and then I put like a pair of points there. So it's not really a singular point that it's coming to. It has a point, like a line that goes across here and then another point. And I can actually zoom in and show you that real quick. It might give you a little bit better idea. It created a sort of rounded edge there. And when it did the rounded edge there, it manipulates or copies that shape. So we will go back to um, 100% here, get ourselves back ready for our next uh, stroke. So since we have this shape here, what we're going to do now is create another offset path. And we're going to use that to create another shape around it. And I'm going to manipulate this one to be a four point. When I click preview, it's just slightly larger than the original shape, not much. And I'm going to choose to make it a gray color. And as you notice, I have it set as web colors. You can shut web colors off and you know have it be a fuller gamut. But sometimes for color selection sake, it's a little easier to have web colors enabled. And as you can see now, we now have two sets of strokes. All right. So now, I click off. I'm going to do one more shape around it. And then this one is going to end up being one that we're going to use for our next process. And the next process I'm going to do is going to show you how to do a drop shadow. So we have a cool set of numbers now. Um, a lot of people will probably be content with them just the way they are. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do a drop shadow. And uh, it's a technique that a lot of people, I think, uh, really will find a lot of useful, um, have a lot of use for in their skin making. Um, it kind of adds a little bit of a flair to your numbers. So what I'm going to do is I've got it selected. And this one's actually a pretty easy process. I'm going to choose copy. Simple copy and paste project. And instead of just doing paste, I'm going to do paste in back. What that does is it creates another shape identical to the one we originally did, but it places it behind it. And as I showed you earlier, when we move the numbers closer or further together using um, the arrow keys or the shift key, I'm going to use the shift key to kind of move things out a little and position it right about there, I think. So as you can see, we've got a drop shadow. And we've got this outline shape. What I can do is I can make a compound path, but I'm going to show you why that's not going to work very well. As you can see, it's kind of created this little white outline around things, and it doesn't really look right. Well, how do you fix that? Well, another technique that I'm going to show you is called using pathfinders. And as you can see, I have this little tab up here that says Pathfinder already selected. Um, I use it so often that uh, it's commonplace on my desktop. Um, and it pops up either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this option here. It says Unite. Option click, click to create a custom or a compound shape and add to the shape area. Um, I'm just going to click the button. And what it's going to do is it's going to combine those two layers that we just had into one, as you can see. And it's going to cut out a lot of the inner stuff that was floating around in it. What you're going to end up having is a combined drop shadow and outer 
um, shape or uh, outer uh, stroke. Now you can actually go in if you want to. Some people will do this. Um, I'm probably not going to do it in this particular tutorial, but it's a pretty easy process anyhow. Um, you can go in and uh, as you look at the shape, there's these points here. If we just select that one, you can go in and use this tool up here, your pen tool. Use the delete anchor point tool and delete anchor points around it. You can also go in, um, in the case of sometimes where there's a rounded shape, you can add an additional point like right here. You can add a point up here and then just delete that point and it will trace right around the outside edge of the shape. So there is our number with our drop shadow. And the next tutorial I do, I will show you how to take this entire shape and bring it back into Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, look forward to seeing some more work from you guys. Take care.